Let's practice solving absolute value inequalities together. For number one, we have the absolute value of 6x is less than or equal to 18. And when we're solving these, we want to really make sure we have the absolute value bars isolated on one side, which it looks like we do have in this problem. So right from the start, what we're going to do is separate this into two different inequalities that don't have the absolute values. So what we do is we write one of them. The first one is just going to be 6x and we're going to drop the bars and write less than or equal to 18. And our second scenario is that we are going to have uh, this 6x without the absolute value bars again, but we're going to now flip the inequality symbol the other way. So we're going to write greater than or equal to, and then we're going to write the opposite of 18, which is going to be negative 18 instead. Once we have our two different inequality statements, we just want to isolate x or isolate the variable we have. So on the left here, we can divide both sides by 6. If we go ahead and do so, dividing by 6, then we just have x is going to be less than or equal to three for our first uh, solution here and then or first boundary and then for our second one if we divide by six on both left and right here uh, we're going to end up with saying that uh, x is going to be greater than or equal to negative three so while we can write our solution using two separate inequalities uh, just like this, we could also combine them in this case and say that we have that uh, negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is going to be less than or equal to positive 3. Going ahead and graphing this solution on a number line, it would look something like this, where we would have uh, 0 in the middle, uh, negative 3 to the left, positive 3 to the right. And because we have these uh, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to symbols, we're going to put a closed circle here on negative 3 and a closed circle or filled in circle on positive 3. And we're going to go ahead and shade in uh, between these two. I'm going to go above here. Any values of x that are between negative 3 and positive 3, including negative 3 and positive 3, uh, would be solutions to this inequality. Uh, for number two, we have the absolute value of this x plus 4, and that's going to be less than or equal to 8. So for our first statement, we're going to write x plus 4, and write is less than or equal to 8. So same thing as what we uh, had without the absolute value bars. And our second statement we can say is uh, x plus 4, and instead of less than or equal to, we're going to write greater than or equal to. Instead of 8, we're going to write the opposite, which is negative 8. Okay. To solve the inequality on the left, let's go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides. And if we go ahead and do that, then we can end up with saying that we have x is less than or equal to positive 4. And for our inequality on the right, we can go ahead and take away 4 from both sides as well. That will help isolate our x. If we go ahead and do that, we're going to say that x is greater than or equal to a negative 8 minus 4 is going to be negative 12. If we would like to write this as a compound inequality, we can, we can say that this is going to be negative 12 is less than or equal to x, which is going to be less than or equal to this positive 4. And if we're going to go ahead and sketch what the solutions look like on a graph, then on our number line here, we would have maybe 0 somewhere over here, positive 4 to the right, negative 12 would be a little bit further on the left side. And then we're going to go ahead and put closed or filled in circles on negative 12 and on positive 4. Uh, X could be any values between negative 12 and 4, including those two values, to make this uh, inequality true. For number 3, we have the absolute value of this x minus 2 is less than 8. So for our first statement, let's just go ahead and write x minus 2 is less than 8. And then for our second statement here, we're going to write uh, x minus 2, and that's going to be greater than negative 8. Okay, those are our two statements. Let's go ahead and uh, isolate x in both of them. So on the left here, let's add 2 to both sides. If we add 2, we're going to get x is less than 10. That's going to be um, for the one on the left. The one on the right, let's go ahead and add 2 to both sides here, plus 2, plus 2. If we go ahead and do that, then the minus 2 is going to cancel out on the left side we're going to get x is greater than negative 6. Just like in the past two problems, because we had less than inequalities, we can actually combine this and say that negative 6 is smaller than x, which is smaller than positive 10. And if we want to go ahead and uh, graph our solutions here, we can go ahead and make a simple number line. And uh, we can put 0 over here, negative 6 to the left of it, and then positive 10 a little bit further to the right. And in this case, uh, we're not going to fill in the circles. We're going to keep them open. Um, x cannot equal negative 6 and x cannot equal positive 10. 
but anything in between those two numbers would be solutions for this inequality. Here's number four. For number four, let's go ahead and separate this out. So we can say that 5x is less than or equal to 10 for one of our inequalities, and the other one is going to be 5x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 10. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and isolate x for each of these. Let's divide by 5, divide by 5. On the left side, uh, we're going to get x is going to be less than or equal to positive 2. And on the right side here, we can divide by 5 as well on both sides of this inequality and find out that x is going to be uh, greater than or equal to negative 2. Again, our original inequality had a less than symbol in it, so we can combine this and say this is negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive 2. And so that means that x can be any of the values between negative 2 and positive 2, including their values, uh, that would be solutions here. So 2 would be to the right, negative 2 would be to the left, and these values are also included in the solution. So we're going to put these filled in circles on negative 2 and positive 2 and anything in between here would satisfy these inequality. And since we do have that line that shows uh, underneath the inequality that they can also be negative two and positive two, so it's inclusive, uh, and anything in between them are also going to be solutions. All right, number five is the first one that's different for a couple different reasons. Uh, the first reason being is that uh, this absolute value is not isolated. We have this additional plus five that's outside of it. And also we have our first greater than symbol. So we're gonna have a slightly different graph uh, and a slightly different process that we're gonna go through to solve uh, this problem. Okay, so first of all, I'm just gonna copy this down and say the absolute value of x plus five is greater than or equal to 11. This is just the original problem, right? Uh, what we're going to do first here is let's just, we have to isolate the absolute value uh, symbol. So let's go ahead and take away five from both sides of this inequality. If we go ahead and do that, we get the absolute value of x is going to be greater than or equal to, and 11 minus five is six. Okay. Now that it's isolated, that absolute value bar, we can write two different inequality statements. So the first one, let's just drop the bars and say x is greater than or equal to six. And for our second one, we're gonna write x and then flip the inequality. So instead of greater than or equal to, it's gonna be less than or equal to, and the opposite of six is negative six. Okay, so uh, in this case, this is as far as we can go. We can't write uh, these together. It's gonna to go uh, in two different directions. And you'll see when you graph this, what this is gonna look like. So here is a quick number line, and let's just put zero in the middle for reference, and then six here to the right, negative six here to the left. And when we go ahead and graph this, if x is greater than or equal to 6, then it does include 6 and anything higher than it, so in this direction. And then when x is less than or equal to negative 6, it can equal negative 6, but also can equal anything smaller than it, so anything in this direction. Uh, for number 6, we have the absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than 0. So I'm going to start by just copying down the original problem here. And then let's go ahead and get the absolute value symbol alone. So I'm going to go ahead and start by adding 2 to both sides of this inequality. If we add 2 to both sides here, we're going to get the absolute value of x is going to be greater than 2. Okay. And writing our two different inequalities, we can say x is going to be greater than 2. And we can also say that x is going to be less than negative 2. Okay. Um, just like in the last problem here, we had a greater than symbol to begin with, so the arrows are going to go in different directions on our graph, which means that we cannot combine it to make um, a compound inequality going together. And so let's go ahead and put a zero in the middle here, a positive two and a negative two. And let's see here, it's got to be greater than two, so not including two, anything to the right of it excluding the two and then as long as x is less than negative two not including negative two then these would be solutions as well here's number seven for number seven we have the absolute value of this x minus two and then we have a minus five and that's going to be less than negative two so let's go ahead and get the absolute value bar uh, isolated we're going to start by adding five to both sides of this inequality we add five to both sides here we can get that the absolute value of this x minus 2 is going to be less than positive 3. Okay, 
At this point, we can break it into two different inequalities without the absolute value bar. So x minus two is gonna be less than three. That's gonna be one of them. And our second one is gonna be x minus two is going to be greater than negative three. For our uh, inequality on the left, let's add two to both sides, add two. If we go ahead and add two to both sides here, we're going to get that x is going to be less than five. And for our inequality on the right, we can also add two to both sides. And if we go ahead and do that, we're gonna end up with x is greater than negative one. Because we had a less than symbol in the beginning here, we can rewrite this as uh, one joint compound inequality and say uh, negative one is going to be less than x, which is going to be less than five. And then you can hopefully see that when we graph this, uh, that we have those uh, similar types of graphs where they are uh, kind of compounded next to each other or all the values in between them uh, are the ones that are gonna be solutions here. So here's negative one, zero, and five. Uh, we have to have an open circle just because we can't have these values be included. Um, and because we had that less than here, it is connected in the middle. Anything between negative one and five will be solutions excluding negative one and five. Here's number eight. For number eight, we have this absolute value of x minus four minus three, and that's going to be less than five. What we can do here is let's go ahead and isolate the absolute value bar by adding three to both sides of the inequality. If we go ahead and add three, add three, we have the absolute value of this x minus four, and that's going to be less than positive eight. Okay, now let's separate this into two different inequalities, x minus four, that's gonna be less than eight. And our second one here is going to be x minus four, and that's going to be greater than negative eight. Now let's solve each of these on the left. We can add four and add four on both sides. If we add four, then we're gonna end up with uh, saying we have x is going to be less than 12, okay? And the one on the right, let's go ahead and add four too add four to both sides. If we go ahead and do that, then we have x alone, and x is going to be greater than negative four. Okay, so uh, we had a less than symbol here, so we should be able to combine these. We can say that negative four is less than x, which is less than 12. So throwing this on a rough number line, what we can do here is say, okay, here is negative four, and then zero would be pretty close to it and then positive 12 would be somewhere over here to the right. And so x would be sandwiched in between these two values, excluding the negative four and 12. For number nine, it looks like we have the absolute value of 10x minus four is less than 34. So the absolute value bar is already isolated, so we can go right to splitting. We can say that 10x minus four is going to be less than 34. And for our second uh, inequality, we can write 10x minus four, and that's going to be greater than negative 34. Okay, so to solve each of these on the left side, let's start by adding four to both sides, add four and add four. If we go ahead and do that, then on the left side, we're going to then have uh, 10x is going to be less than 38. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is divide both sides by 10 here, divide by 10, divide by 10. If we go ahead and do so, then we're gonna get a rational number here. So X is going to be less than, and then I'll use a decimal, I guess. I'll use 3.8. We can say three and four fifths if you would like to as well. On the right, let's also add four and add four to both sides of this inequality. If we go ahead and do so, we're gonna get 10 X is greater than negative 30. And then if we go on to have uh, X alone, let's divide by 10, divide by 10. We can say here that x is going to be greater than negative three. All right, we have this less than symbol again, so uh, we should be able to write this as a compound inequality uh, that is sandwiched. So we have negative three is going to be less than x, which is going to be less than 3.8. So when we go ahead and sketch this graph, it should look like all the other uh, graphs where we had it sandwiched together. So uh, we have negative three over here, zero over here, and 3.8 slightly further away on the positive side. Throw some open circles on negative three and positive 3.8, and go ahead and show that anything between these would be solutions, excluding negative three and positive 3.8. Here's number 10. 
For number 10, we are going up another level here. There's a little bit more uh, steps that we have to be considering here. So we have this nine in front, and then we have this minus 10 outside the absolute value uh, bars, and then this is gonna be less than negative 73. So just like before, we need to isolate the absolute value bars. Uh, first, always take care of any addition or subtraction. So I'm gonna start by adding 10 to both sides of this inequality. If we go ahead and do that, we're gonna get nine times the absolute value of this x minus two, and that's going to be less than uh, negative 63. Okay, next we wanna get rid of this nine that's out in front multiplying by the absolute value, so let's divide both sides here by nine. If we go to do so, we get the absolute value of x minus two, and that's going to be less than negative seven. All right. At this point, what we can do is separate this into two different inequalities, uh, but please notice here that we have the absolute value of something, and how is that going to be less than a negative number, right? So absolute value bars are gonna tell us that we're gonna get a positive value or, or a distance uh, that is zero or higher, and so you can't possibly take the absolute value of something and have it be a negative value, right? So in this case, we would say that this would be no solution. For number 11, let's try out this one. So copying this down, we have three plus four times the absolute value of this three X plus seven, and uh, that's gonna be greater than or equal to negative 89. So let's try to isolate the absolute value bars here. Uh, start off again by adding or subtracting, so we can get rid of this three in front by subtracting three from both sides. If we go ahead and do so, then we're gonna have four times the absolute value of this three X plus seven and that's going to be greater than or equal to, uh, I think, negative 92, right? And then if we wanna get rid of this four in front, let's go ahead and divide both sides by four. If we go ahead and do so, we're gonna get the absolute value of three X plus seven, and this whole thing is gonna be greater than or equal to, I think that's going to be negative 23, okay? Now at this point, since we have the absolute value of some expression here has to be greater than or equal to negative 23, uh, that's always going to be greater than negative 23 because the absolute value of this expression is always going to be zero or higher, right? Because it's absolute value. So uh, any value for x is going to uh, work uh, because we're gonna get a value greater than negative 23. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and say that uh, x can equal here uh, all real numbers. So I'm gonna go write all real numbers. All right, last problem, number 12. For number 12 here, let's go ahead and copy this one down. There seems to be a few pieces as well. So we have nine times the absolute value of one plus eight X, okay? And then we're gonna write minus three, and that's gonna be greater than or equal to 78, all right? Uh, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and add three to both sides of this inequality. We'd like to just isolate the absolute value bar uh, the best we can here. So if we do add three, we're gonna get nine times absolute value of one plus eight X, and this is going to be greater than or equal to 81. Then we can go ahead and divide both sides by nine here. So once we divide both sides by nine, we have the absolute value of one plus eight X, and that's going to be greater than or equal to nine, okay? Splitting this into two different inequalities, we have uh, one plus eight X, and that's going to be greater than or equal to nine. And our second one here, we're gonna have one plus eight X is going to be less than or equal to negative nine, okay? Now solving the one on the left, let's go ahead and take away one from both sides. If we go ahead and do so, uh, the ones are gonna cancel out, and we're gonna have eight X is greater than or equal to eight. And then we can go ahead and divide both sides by eight here. If we go ahead and do so, we're gonna get X is greater than or equal to one. For our inequality on the right, let's go ahead and take away one from both sides. It's a very similar process here. And uh, we're gonna get eight X is less than or equal to negative nine minus one is negative 10. And then we can go ahead and isolate X by dividing both sides by eight. If we do that, we're gonna get X is less than or equal to uh, negative one and a quarter, negative 1.25, okay? So uh, these are gonna be our two, uh, uh, I guess, barriers for our solutions. And so we're going to go ahead and put this on a number line so we can see this visually, what all the numbers that work here. Uh, let's go ahead and put uh, maybe zero right over here. 
uh, positive one would be maybe somewhere to the right and a negative 1.25 would be somewhere over here to the left a little bit further. And then so what values of x work? Well, anything that's greater than or equal to uh, one, we can go ahead and say that's going to be a filled in circle to the right. And then to the left, let's go ahead and put a filled in circle on negative 1.25. Anything that's negative 1.25 or smaller would also be solutions. Now there were two graphs that I had skipped a moment ago. I'm gonna come back and do those right now just because they're a little bit different. So for number 10, if you have a graph that has no solution, what we typically do is just go ahead and uh, you can make a number line, I guess, and just put zero in the middle and you can put a couple numbers down like five and negative five. Uh, you just wouldn't do any shading or anything like that. So uh, you're just showing that there are no values that would make this uh, inequality, absolute value inequality true. And then when you have something that's all real numbers, something that you can do like for number 11 uh, here is draw your number line, right? And if you're showing that like any number is going to work here, then you can go ahead and put again like zero, you can put five and negative five, uh, just a couple of numbers down here. But in terms of showing like what it's allowed to be, uh, some people will just go ahead and, you know, kind of color in the whole line and say like any number will work and you can just draw an arrow through the number line and show that there, anything's fair game to be a value for X to make this absolute value inequality true. So there you have uh, 12 different practice problems on solving some absolute value inequalities. I hope you found the video helpful and as always keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next one.